for part two, now we are actually getting into actual malware. So, so far, but all the, uh, the labs we have done, we're going to actually use it during the actual, um, look, when we're looking at the malware, right? Okay, so we are at the part two, uh, poison ivy. So, this poison ivy is uh, popular is because it's available really. Yeah. I probably put the uh, in the reference where you can download the poison ivy uh, files. And the good term uh, you need to remember is implant. So when you actually make the, uh, we're going to actually make the uh, implant, uh, poison ivy implant. Implant means actually you are the piece of, uh, of the malware that is actually run on the uh, victim's machine, the compromised machine. That's called implant, and the controller is the one that, from the outside, it actually connects to the implant and then look around this compromised machine. So this is a more general term, implant and controller. But when you actually go to Poison ID website, they call it implant as a server, and the uh, controller as a client. So I think the reason is because when once this implant runs, it, it is actually waiting for the controller to connect. Right. That's why. When, uh, when you see the uh, poison ivy documentation, you call, you know, keep calling it a server and client. But for this class, I'm going to call it as an implant and a controller, or vice versa. Once it's a little confusing, then I'm going to make it clear what, what it is. Okay. It's like an SSH forwarding. So SSH forwarding, okay. It's called a Right. Oh, in the access is what is the code of state which shows like yeah, a server so client. Yes, yes, client. right. Whoever is waiting for a connection, that's yes. the server, right? Yes. Yeah, and who is connecting to is a client, right? All right, and uh, when you, we see later you know, the uh, poison IV implant, you will see, uh, see that the actual communication between the uh, implant and controller is uh, encrypted. And I'm sure there is a, a people made a module that uh, how to decrypt it, you know, decrypt this in you know, an encrypted uh, uh, communication. This because binaries are available, they have to reverse this. I don't think source files are available. I don't think so. For, um, and and you know, you find you can look around in the file system or registry keys, and, and you can get the screenshot. You can do the killover do uh, multiple things. And also, once implant being deployed, I mean, in, in fact, uh, a machine, then it doesn't require actually updates. You rather actually get some plugin as necessary, you know, and if a uh, attacker wants, you know, as a new functionality, then it just, you know, install by just putting their plugin. And there's a, one of the available uh, third party plugins. And the controller, we will see the controller. And is it, okay, this one's already uh, explained. Once uh, like compromise one machine, then you actually connect to the machine and then look around and they do you know what this controller wanna do. You can do mostly everything. Okay, actually, yeah, I missed that one. So this you know different implants connect to the controller. Okay, so one thing that he, this one was saying is that one when we were going to make the implant, and the, when we make the implant, it uh, specify what controller's IP is. So when we make make implant, those information is going to be embedded into implant. So once compromise the machine, then it go back to okay, hey, I I'm available for you to use basically. Right. And I am at the part. And page five. All right. Here's say at the uh, part two, page five. Let's start uh, from VM uh, virtual box manager, and from here, controller. Please restore to configure snapshot, which it probably already is, and let's start. Controller VM. Okay, do you see the green background on your machine? Okay. 
and on the uh, desktop you will see malware class and do you see samples and poison ivy okay so I came from controller VM and malware class on the desktop and went to samples and poison IV, right? And do you see this poison IV 2.3.2? Please double click. And you will need to like, scroll it all the way down to the uh, the EULA here. Go, if you scroll down a bit, then you will see now I agree button being activated. Do you see that? So you need to move, scroll, or uh, scroll this one a bit in order to have this I agree to be seen. You can uh, select don't show this in the future, but I want to do it just in case if I need to repeat this one. So I say I agree. Now you see the poison IV. Uh, this is a client part, and no, actually not client. It's just how to make the implant. Okay. So we are. At the uh, slide five, okay. Let's go from here and file new server. You see, new server. Server is a uh, poison ivy term, but we call it as a uh, implant. New server and create profile. We are at the page still five and put it as PI agent slide 5 and create profile profile name PI underscore agent and enter say OK and then you see it uh, DNS port so we will modify this one Hold on a second. Um, DNS port. Okay. DNS underscore port. We'll put the IP address of the controller. The 20. I modified it. 192.168.56.20 and do you see colon then the port the uh, poison ID controller we're going to listen is 3460 right and then colon zero and please do not remove this comma it just it should be as it is right then select next I'm at the slide seven. And select start on system startup. Okay. And this one. HKLM run name, I put it as a secret agent, underscore agent. And copy file. I click here. The information that I'm doing is it is on the slide seven. And file name I'll put it as a PI driver.exe. Okay. Then I checked copy to alternate data stream. Okay. So when you configure it as a seven, then next. All right. This one. I want to just leave it as it is. I'm at the slide eight. Then, do you see, then select next. Then there is a generate and there's OK button, right? Let's say generate and put it as a PI test.exe. Generate. 
that is explained on the slide eight. Then say save. Then okay. Right. When you see the uh, now the uh, poison ivy directory, now you see pi test exe. So the next one is explain the copy file to the victim VM, but now it's gonna be just manual work, right? You copy through the uh, WinSCP to the victim machine, so it is just manual copying process. So I, I am going to skip to slide ten. Okay. So for that. From now here, please use piagent.exe. The reason is just in case, so you know, we can see the exactly same result. So I already made a piagent.exe, and that is on the victim's machine, as, VM machine as well. Okay, so this is just how, how simple it is. The making implant it took less than 10 minutes, right? And people use the poison ivy uh, to make the, uh, actually this piece of mal malware. Malicious code in order to do the research, you know, in order to do, you know, basically do other stuff. Maybe an attack will actually use it, actually be used. So it is this easy. And there is a other, you know, very similar to poison IV and actually being uh, used by the uh, malicious people, basically. All right. All right. Good. All right. Now I'm at the slide 10. Okay, slide 10, oh, okay, so it was on the slide 10, I'm just explaining on victim VM, the uh, PI agent file is already there, so you can, let's see, in the virtual box manager, let's start uh, snapshot from the RC8 again, so please start victim VM, RC8. So at this point, you should have controller VM running and controller VM and victim VM here, okay? All right, so let's, everyone has two VMs? Quick hands up, okay. all right, good. All right, then on the victim VM, there's a poison IV, now let's go to the file. The, oh, oh, sorry, yeah, control of VM. Control of VM, let's go in the poison IV, let's go file and new client. Okay, and start. So now is a client started and waiting for any compromised machine connected back to the client. Okay, uh, I'm gonna click random. So I just uh, made the Poison IV client, which is a controller, right? A Poison IV controller uh, by following uh, slide 10. Okay? And let's go to victim VM. And now I'm moving to slide 11. And let's go malware class, samples. And poison ID and start PI agent. You double click this one on the malware class samples poison ID and double click PI agent. Once you double click that one, let's go back to controller and then see. Do you see this entry now? So when you see the PI underscore agent here. And please double click. Now you see you can control this compromise of victim machine through using this window. All right. So now on uh, slide 11, it asks Q1. So let's uh, try to answer the question from question one to question three. On page uh, on slide eleven. Do you see here on the left side there's a remote shell and you will see the uh, gray on the right. 
and you need to select activate. So the uh, DOS prompt you are seeing here is uh, the actually DOS prompt on the victim's VM. For the kid, okay, yeah, let's see the uh, so one set DIR. You can use uh, this uh, DOS prompt to execute anything basically you want. All right, so let's go over the answers. So the number one, uh, the uh, question was uh, use remote shell and start a calculator, right? All right, so I, I have shell, a dos, dos shell, and what can I do is C, C, Windows system 32 calc.exe right and I'll just check on the victim's machine when I close it then nothing is actually running here right so who got the calc.exe who put CD on the victim machine could you could you everyone okay all right so let's see so on the con controller I can just uh, Put the command line here, and let's see. On victim's machine, now I see the calculator here, right? So you can basically spawn any process you want. And from here, now the number question is: Can you kill the calculator on the victim VM? So there can be a you know, multiple way to kill it. But one of one of way can do is you go to the processes. Right now you have all list of processes on the victim VM, right? And let's go. There's a cat.exe, right? It's always one of the way. You can one of one of the ways, but you can do you know some other way to kill the uh, cat.exe. But I just for this one I choose to select processes here menu and select cat.exe. Then there's a menu, uh, the option to kill kill process, right? Let's go back to victim. Now the calculator process is uh, uh, killed, right? Basically showing you can do, do pretty much everything through the controller, up here, controller, right? There was that, and uh, question three, it says, what's, the, what's in the registry value secret underscore agent of the like, software, Let's see. From here, you can do reg edit, right? Even there's a search. How about I will still go to the reg edit, and I will select uh, LKLM and software and Microsoft and Windows. So, the, uh, the registry. Path I'm following is on the slide 11 in Windows and current version and see from here there's a run key. Is alphabetic? There we go here, run key. Right? On the on the secret underscore agent. It says, okay, there's a wrong key, secret underscore agent. But when you see here, Windows system32 and colon uh, pi driver.exe, right? Let's see what this in the column means that comes after the directory or the file that is an alternate data stream. So when you actually see on the um, like, uh, system, you cannot see the file uh, those uh, the file didn't exist basically C and Windows and system this is a, a victim a VM and let's see system 32 here right property doesn't look like anything that special right when you go system 32 is it uh, pi agent is here? Pi agent. 
view details when you go here there's a nothing start with pi and a right so uh, pi uh, your pi driver.exe right so that means actually file is not there but for windows there's a uh, basically special uh, it's metadata the alternate data stream is a metadata so you can store any data but using just explore, you cannot see anything. So this is one way to hide itself to you know in the disk. So that's what uh, it is about. And the thing, the wrong key, wrong key. We will, will you uh, run, uh, learn what is this in you know, a registry key is for while we are learning all the persistent tech, uh, techniques. Okay. So here's that. And here. Let me actually use Gmer to see. So since by looking at this explorer, you don't know whether there is a file or not, the uh, PI driver.exe, right? But there is a tool. Oh, okay, close it. That's fine. Malware tools. So this Gmer tool is a tool for to identify a uh, detect root key kits root kits. So this is one of the thing one of the tool and when you see here so I just select in the malware tools and Gmer okay and when you run Gmer here you can select which one I do you want to look at basically for here it, it is not selected as a C drive because you're going to take too much of a long time for the files but let's see for Quick search scan. I'm sure you want to scan the uh, Windows, uh, Windows and System 32 because you know, it's one of the important directory. So let me actually scan it and then let's see it actually uh, find out the alternate uh, data stream. And this root, including Gmail tool. There's another class root kits that uh, that introduced in the other other tools to identify the root kits. Because even if you crash, it once you reboot, the uh, poison ID should still should be there. Except system, you can select everything. Services, okay, there and scan. So there we go, right? So it just ADS is one of those. It's not completely advanced technique, but you know, just is a Gmail to detect as a, something is being hidden, right? So you can use it, Gmail or even other tools to identify if there's uh, any uh, alternate data stream is there or not but this one is some uh, legitimate you know metadata that windows actually support all right now let's i am going to kill the victim machine and restore restore to rc8 all right and please kill controller as well we will not use it for a while and restore to the configured snapshot yeah yeah there's no reason not to run i think yeah unless you have some uh, anti uh, uh, virus is installed here yeah. Oh, okay, that's actually a good question. So the here the big malware is run and then uh, the machine being patched is a bit different story. So usually not being patched means there's some vulnerabilities there. So actually how the uh, attack is happened, actually Mike has uh, the uh, class that is instant response. It talks about all the, those details, right? How you get actually some, no, okay, some incident happened then people comes in as an instant response and check your machine 
and then grab the malware, and then malware messages come, uh, no, steps comes after this instance uh, handling, basically. So in case of patch machine and the malware, um, they are related, they, they are actually, but uh, this malware still can run fully patched machine. How it works is if you, you're on patch, then what it does is, for example, PDF file, it, it has exploiting some vulnerability in the Adobe Reader. Then it, you send it to, you know, send, it is a PDF file, or you want to exploit this unpatched machine. But after that, once it's being exploited, being exploited means this Adobe Reader is not supposed to run any other code. If it's not just displaying the document, but it runs out of code, which is being means which being exploited, right? So uh, patching means you can block that that you know uh, that exploit by changing the software to up to date. But if somebody sends you like a executable file through the email and they just click, that means it doesn't matter you have patched your machine or not. But I was curious to see if it sure. has, it has a, a web browser injection. Web so browser in injection. When you create, when you uh -huh. create the, uh, the server, mm -hmm. yeah. so the implant. Mm -hmm. So it has an option there, inject the browser. OK, right. So the that question. one works. That one, it, it, it will. Because another in injecting uh, code is also irrelevant from whether your system being patched or not is irrelevant because uh, I was going to show you the, some API calls. It doesn't matter, you know, and you, you will be still that because you cannot patch it because there is a no patch because this is the, some API calls it is not something exploiting some you know, vulnerability. It is just using a legitimate uh, function calls, but you can still inject you know some malicious uh, call into into the explore or explore any process that running on the victim's machine, right? So then we will to deal with, uh, about the uh, DLL injection or code injection injection after uh, this uh, cons cons consistent techniques. Okay. Right. So semantic, you know, currently looks for the signature string of what they know poison ivy as we just downloaded, but it looks like the name. Yes. Hash, et cetera, but yes. It's safe. You know, the, the, it's like right. a sync. So that's default. But it's safe to say there's probably thousands of you know manipulations and different variants of the correct. Yes, which correct. Semantic doesn't know about. Yes. So poison ID is not something old and not being used. It is actually still being used because they can manipulate it. Basically, change something, then it actually generate completely different uh, binary. That means the signature cannot detect the those, and you can even after making uh, any implant, you can pack. You know, we just call the pack. Uh, learn about the packer, right? Once you pack, it comes out as a completely different binary again. So uh, yes, and then yeah, there is a limit that uh, Symantec AV can detect based on the signatures. There is always a kind of what's called red and chase, red and cat game. I don't know how to yeah, explain. Cat mouse. Huh? cat mouse, yeah. Satan changed something, antivirus changed something else, but you know, keep moving, basically. I think probably a better way to go about it is instead of just playing cat and mouse on like post-based detection, you can also do like network-based detection since it's from your phone that you know it's running the client. Right. Also like have like source fire or whatever like alerts. Right. And like trying to detect like trap patterns. Right, right. That's that's one way. So if you, you can so uh, compared to this one binary, network traffic is not uh, if once it have, a malware has it, then it doesn't change that a lot. So you can detect mm -hmm. from the network. Mm -hmm. Or and another way to actually detect this is like the host host based intrusion detection is more like in looking at the uh, more uh, heuristics. Of why this one piece of code is you know doing the uh, injection to another this process that processes. That's one way to do it. But Another problem uh, with that is some actually security software actually do some code injection as well. So later on, the distinguishing between is a malware or is actually a security product. This is another kind of you know challenge. So all right, we are slightly uh, digress, but it's okay. Good question. Good question. Good discussion. 
Oh, so far, any questions? Do you want to look around the poison idea a little bit? Actually, right after I close the, uh, do you want to look around a little bit? Um, I think my question on poison idea was, I mean, it actually has, you know, like a correspondence that says, so I've been through the, the tool, I mean, it has like a help section, and then it has, somebody is maintaining this, so is it a commercial thing? Okay, is it, okay, the point, the so maintaining it, and so I check, somebody, somebody actually uh, professionally made it, but it hasn't been updated for a while, at least a couple of years. So I, I, before I, uh, I was preparing for this class, I uh, grabbed all the tools that is up to date, but Poison IV wasn't uh, actually updated. So, but probably some professional and people made it. And maybe they are still updating it, but they are not having it available, but they're still selling it to, you know, whatever the black market. <laughs>